Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. She can bake a cherry pie that will hit you in the eye. She's a young thing and cannot sleep. David. Why? Baby's just gone back to sleep. He just woke up. I know. That's what's so wonderful about it. After his breakfast, he usually sits around and crows and demands all sorts of attention. This morning, poof, back to sleep. You think it's Mr. Tucker's influence still? (laughs) Could be. After my breakfast, I think I could poof back to sleep, too. (laughs) Come on, let's go downstairs and eat. Well, I don't know why the baby should be tired. When we came home last night, he was sleeping soundly. (laughs) You see, all of your fears were for nothing. Yep. Mr. Tucker turned out to be the sitter of sitters. All people. That funny old man. He certainly takes his responsibilities as a neighbor seriously. I love him. I wouldn't mind if he came over and sat with me while I slept. I'm tired. (laughs) No wonder getting to bed so late. Here, drink your orange juice. Have some coffee. You'll feel better. Well... A nice evening with the Johnsons. I certainly can't do it too often. <laughs> I wonder how Mr. Tucker is this morning. According to him last night, he should be the same as usual this morning. It was smooth sailing, he said. Our son is an angel. Oh, sure. Now, don't you go spilling all this around the neighborhood. Tucker wants to keep it in a deep, dark place. Oh, I intend to Make tell a everybody. Secret of it. Well, I wouldn't put it past you. David, you know what? No, what? Pass me the cream. Mm. Thanks. Is that all you were going to ask me? I wasn't going to ask you anything. I was going to tell you something. Oh. David, do you know I was looking at the baby this morning and I noticed a marked resemblance? Mm, everybody says he has your eyes. Oh, no, no, not me. And everybody says he has my chin. Thank goodness. That wasn't what I noticed, darling. The baby looked like Jared Tucker. The spitting image. Spittin'. There he was, lying in his crib, toothless, balding, <laughs> slightly wizened around the edges, his body kind of cramped up. David, he was another Jared Tucker. Well, they say that babies do start looking like the people around them. Do you think we should make a habit of Mr. Tucker? I don't think Mr. Tucker wants to be made a habit of. Well, he's going to make the baby so serene and calm that he, he drops off to sleep like an angel. Mr. Tucker is the man for me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Have some... More coffee? No, oh, thanks. I think I'll call him up today and thank him again. He trudged off so sleepily last night, he didn't give us half a chance. Tucker here! Mm-mm. Mr. Tucker, good! We're, we're in the dining room. Tucker coming! I didn't hear the front door, did you? He could have crept in through a crack in the wall. Yes. <laughs> morning! Morning, Tom! <laughs> good morning! Sit down and have a cup of coffee with us, neighbor. Uh, don't mind if I do, ma'am. A uh, large cup. Right here on the sideboard. Oh, David, pass the extra cup, will you? Oh, here you are. Well, Mr. Tucker, how, how be you this morning? Oh, I'd be fine. You do? Why? Don't I look fine? Yep, you look fine. Oh, well, if I do, it ain't no fault of my own. Hey, hey, be careful. I'm pouring the coffee. You want to get scalded? Want some toast, Mr. Tucker, or have you eaten? Well, I'll have a soft piece. Good. See, I ain't that yet. Oh, you haven't had breakfast? I thought you always ate with the rooster. Well, I kind of got fouled up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Rooster fowl, get me that Yeah, I joke. get you. Yes, I get you. <laughs> uh, slept kind of later than usual this morning. Matter of fact, never slept, slept uh, late in my life since I've become a man. No wonder you got to <laughs> bed very late. Why, it must have been midnight. Oh, it ain't late for me, ma'am. When you get to my age, you don't need so much gasoline to run so far. But I sure slept this morning. Oh, you and the baby. Good. You know, you're really getting more alike every minute. The baby sleeping, too, is a very rare occurrence. That don't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if he slept till come evening milking time. David, I think there's more here than meets the eye. You know, last night, Mr. Tucker, we, uh, we didn't have much of a chance to talk to you. Oh, there wasn't nothing to talk about, son. Well, mm-hmm. how'd the baby behave? Was he easy? Fussy? Anything exciting happen? Oh, I reckon he behaved just about like a baby, ma'am. That's, that's what he is, ain't he? Well... Babies can behave very differently. Well, I sure do hope the others behave different than yours did. 
You do? Yeah, but I don't uh, fancy I'd like to set myself up as a nursemaid. Danged if I can see why babies can't behave like young animals do. Why, seven months, and your son ain't nothing but a mule and spewer and a helpless thing. And... Now, that ain't no surprise to me after st- studying the psychology of babies last night that the human race is in the trouble it's in. Well, one baby doesn't make a psychology. Oh, not that I'm complaining about yours, mind you. I suppose he's average, no better, no worse than the others. Mr. Tucker, if you don't tell me what happened, I will bust. Nothing happened. Go ahead, darling, bust. Except, like you said, he <laughs> wanted his trousers changed. Mm-hmm. It begins, David. And uh, something else I want to discuss with you folks, this, uh, this trouser business. Yeah, I, too, have often wanted to discuss that. Seems to me that until we growed up folks can find something better, we're always going to have a heap of trouble. Something better than what? We tie our offspring up in them, uh, them pieces of material, and still we expect them to grow up and be like men. Men who can lead our countries and make our laws and keep us from getting into wars. David, Mr. Tucker doesn't like three-cornered pants. Why, ma'am, it's like putting a sail up on a ship. You don't know which end is which. You get all wrestled up in the material. You can't tell whether the baby is fore or aft. And when you look at him bottom side up, he's kicking and squealing. Ain't hey, no wonder to me. It's the women, Mr. Tucker. Sure it's the women, son. They oh, tie their baby the sons and daughters up in them bandages so as to remind them that they're nothing but babies. It's the wrong foot to get humans started on. That's what it is. Well, if you had your way, Mr. Tucker, what would you do? Well, I... Well, I'd, I'd get him started right. Yes, yes, go on. I'd put the boys in pants and I'd put the girls in skirts and by golly, they'd be on their own. Mm-hmm, for about five minutes. Coddling, that's what it is, coddling. You ain't never going to improve our lot as long as you coddle. Everything you say, Mr. Tucker, is of great interest to me, and I'm inclined to agree with most of it. That, uh, then, uh, what are you going to do about it? Well, what can I do? This isn't a man's world, you know. What do you mean? Oh, the minute a child gets born into your household, Mr. Tucker, you realize that it isn't a man's world. It's the women who rule the roost. (laughs) They bring the child into the world, and they bring them up, and they do it their way, and in the way their mothers did, and their mothers before that. And they don't want any advice. Nope. Don't seem to me they're so successful. Uh-huh. No, you're an authority on children. One evening, a babysitting with yours, ma'am, and an authority is what I be. Yep, that's that's what I be, authority. Well, what else happened? You make it sound as if it was a wild night. Well, when we came home, all was peace and quiet. All was exhaustion and surrender. Well, who surrendered? <laughs> who do you think? Mr. Tucker, of course. Well, everything <laughs> started out kind of quiet. I said to myself, Tucker, there ain't nothing to this baby business. I could go out and get myself 20 babies. Mm-hmm. There ain't nothing to it. Mm-hmm. Then it started, ma'am. Started like the shot that was heard around the world. What started? He opened his mouth, and ma'am, I'm telling you, a symphony orchestra couldn't play as loud and long. <laughs> well, that baby of yours ain't nothing, nothing but long. <laughs> he blew himself up as chesty as a bullfrog, and then started the yodeling. <laughs> That sort of that sort of sounds that that send a cold chill up your spine. I tried it? everything. I changed his changed his uh, trousers. <laughs> that kind of kept us busy for nigh on to a half an hour. But I did it. I did it. All tied up as neat as a Christmas package. He was. I I uh, noticed it. He both dropped off with exhaustion after that, and then. Then he opened his mouth again and he started off. Water he wants. That's, that's what he wants, water, I says. If I was thirsty, I'd yell like that, too. So down to the kitchen I went, found his water bottle, like you says, kind of warmed it up for him, set it to like an egg in a pot of boiling water. That was your, right. Your, your right. efficiency is to be congratulated, Mr. Then Tucker. I trudged me back upstairs. He didn't want no water. <laughs> How'd you know he didn't want no water? Well, he was laying there peaceful as a field of clover on a summer day. Not a pip squeak out of him. Well, that all sounds very simple. Plain possum, he was. Plain possum. <laughs> I no sooner sat down and started ruminating to myself than he opens up his mouth and off he starts again. <laughs> well, I bring him his water and he don't want it. Milk, 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 I says to myself, that's milk, what he wants. Right, right. Downstairs I go again and eat up again. the milk. Back, Back upstairs, upstairs I go, and then he's laying there as quiet and peaceful as a daisy. Well, I ain't going to be decepted by this same baby twice. No, I can imagine. So, this time I don't let him get away with it. No. I nudged him. You nudged him. I says, here, you rascal. I says to him, open your face. No sooner I says this, and in goes a bottle of milk. <laughs> Neatest trick of the week, ma'am. Not a peep out of him after that. 
Well, Mr. Tucker, you are certainly to be congratulated. I am finished. <laughs> I am finished by a long crack. Not a peep out of him after that for 20 minutes. Oh, oh right. 20 minutes only. Well, he really had you hopping. The main huh? trouble with babies, I figure out, is that there ain't no decent means of communication. That, now, that's animals, the they can tell you what to want. They swat their tails or cock their heads. They can even talk to you. And they get an intelligent expression onto their faces. But babies, no. Uh, I no. know, I know. They just lie there looking at you with their big round eyes and no expression, no intelligence, just a. Blank, empty face. That's not true. Bobby tells me what he wants all the time. That's where you're wrong, ma'am. You tell Bobby what he wants all the time, and then you decide he wants it. I never heard of such a thing. Uh, darling, he's 100% correct. But, Mr. Tucker, babies are not the only people that women treat that way. Oh, you don't have to tell me, son. My sister Delilah, she looks at me, she tells me what I want, then she tells me I want it. <laughs> Protesting and beefing and palavering don't help. Women always know what you want better than yourself. I am surrounded. From what you've told us, Mr. Tucker, it's no surprise to me that you overslept this morning. Surprise to me, son, they ever woke up at all. If babies <laughs> wasn't so consarned small, you could tell them a thing or two. But gosh almighty, a man is scared to pick a baby up and throw him around a bit. I hope so. But now I'll give you a piece of advice, ma'am. Yes, now what is that? I got it all figured out about babies. I did what you call a laboratory experiment with oh, yours. Golly. Used Here's him a... just like a guinea pig. Here it comes, darling. Steal yourself. There's only one thing to do, and it works every time. Whenever an infant opens his mouth to yell, put his thumb in it. It works every time. Well, thanks for your advice, Mr. Tucker. I don't care what the psychology books say about it. All the doctors and teachers and professors, they don't know what they're talking about. As long as they're babies, they, there will be thumb suckers. Because babies is the most backward type of animal. You don't catch a pig or a heifer thumb sucking, do you? No, you But don't. with babies, it works every time. It's every the proof time. of the pudding. They're inferior. Now, me coffee. Well, Mr. You deserve Tucker, a big cup, Mr. Tucker. Your saga of the night chills me to the bone, and all I can say is thanks. And say it again. And I'll say something else. You'll never have to take care of the baby again. We appreciate your having done it, and the baby appreciates your having done it, but Mr. Tucker, my word on it, never again. Never You're again. darn tootin' never again. And don't think I'll, I'll ever be on speaking terms with any baby again. Though they're always kind of have a hankering for me. Oh, David, now he is awake. Oh, let him howl. Let him howl, did you say? You want him to bust a gusset, son? Oh, it won't well, hurt but... him to howl a little. That ain't no way to bring up a baby. I, I better go out. Uh, stay where you are, ma'am. Mr. Tucker, I... That's an order. Stay where you are. Yes. There ain't no one going to take care of that baby howling but Jared Tucker. Why, that sweet, helpless little thing. Wait till Grandpappy Tucker picks him up. Here I come, you <laughs> dang blasted infant. Here I come. Women organize chores better than they used to, but they're still inclined to keep at housework a little too steadily and a little too hard. If you're one of those energetic homemakers, why not relax? Reach for an ice-cold bottle of Coca-Cola and treat yourself to the pause that refreshes. You really accomplish more when you work refreshed. Well, you hear that, Mr. King? Hear what, Mr. Tucker? Dead silence, not a pip squeak out of the baby. Amazing. Well, I wish you could tell me about your system, Mr. Tucker, but I guess you'll have to save it. Yep, I'll save it. Be seeing you tomorrow, Mr. Tucker? Right, tomorrow. All right, goodbye. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudio was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>